So our next guest on stage, um, he's with Tranquil, um, and this is Zero X Krillin. So take it away. Hello. Oh. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Zero X Krillin. You can tell I'm a legit Web3 dev because my name starts with Zero X, and I use an anime uh, character as my profile pic. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm a dev on Tranco Finance, which is the first money market protocol on Harmony, and, and we launched uh, last month. Um, also, uh, I also want to share some of my experiences developing this. So personally, I've been a Web2 dev for the past 10 years, and I've only been a Web3 dev for the past two months. Uh, so hopefully, uh, I can also share some experiences coming from Web2 to Web3 as a dev. Um, so first, we have to um, understand what is a money market. Um, so to put it simple, it's like a bank on the blockchain. Um, so say you bridge over uh, your USDC or your uh, wrapped Bitcoin. Um, what can you do with it? Well, you can put it in a liquidity pool, in a DEX, um, but that uh, is kind of risky because you have the risk of impermanent loss. Um, so rather than just keep it in your wallet doing nothing, you can deposit in the bank and earn interest. Um, so where does the interest come from? It comes from uh, borrowers who wants to borrow these assets for whatever reason. Um, so there's a couple of cases. Um, so for example, if, you're, um, if you think the market is going to go up, you can borrow more stable coins and buy uh, more volatile currencies uh, and profit when, they, um, uh, when the market increases. Uh, if you think the market would actually go lower, you can actually say, say you think the one token is going to go lower, you can uh, borrow the one token, sell it, wait for it to go lower, uh, buy it back and return it. So it's a way you can uh, sh make a short position as well. Uh, so this is a very, uh, I guess, somewhat new concept. Um, so our code, we forked it from the compound code, uh, which is a money market in Ethereum that kind of started this whole thing. Um, so one important thing, uh, aspect is that to borrow, uh, you need to deposit collateral. Um, so so uh, this is called over collateralization. Uh, so in case we need to, uh, if you can't return the borrowed money, uh, we need to somehow take your collateral. And then the way that we achieve that is you deposit more collateral than, we, than you borrow. So we can always make sure that our protocol uh, stays solvent. So how does it work? Um, so as a Web2 dev, the thing that really blew my mind with a blockchain um, are these smart contracts. So this is a completely permissionless system. So imagine in a regular bank, um, in the traditional finance world, when you deposit your assets in the bank, the bank holds onto it. Um, and then when you ask for a loan, there's like an employee in the bank that determines if you can get the loan or not. Um, so with these money markets, the thing that blew my mind is it's completely permissionless. So when you deposit your assets, you're actually depositing into a, a smart contract. So, so we have a TQ token contract. There's a similar one for Compound um, that they call a C token. So say you deposit 1,001 tokens into the money market. Uh, you're, we're not taking it. You deposit into a smart contract. So the smart contract would take your one and store your one. And, um, and give you a receipt token that we call a TQ1 token um, that proves that you've deposited it. And then how the interest rate works is that when the interest accrues, your, the TQ token is worth more than the deposit. Um, so when you return the TQ token, when you um, redeem your deposit, you can get more than the $1,000 uh, or the 1,000 ones that you uh, stored. Uh, likewise for the borrow. Um, so to borrow, you actually have to deposit your collateral first. But the borrow decision isn't made by anyone. It's made completely on code in the smart contract. Uh, so, uh, before, so say you want to borrow, uh, you deposit your one and you want to borrow uh, USDC stablecoin. Uh, you want to take a long position. Uh, when you do the borrow, the, uh, the, the, uh, the smart contract actually has to call another smart contract to figure out if you're allowed to borrow, like if you have enough liquidity. Um, so that smart contract is actually called the comptroller contract. So imagine in a, a, a normal bank, there would be someone that would look at your credit report or whatever and say, yes, you can borrow. But in the blockchain world, this entire logic is stored in this comptroller contract. And, that, and then this key thing that the comptroller contract needs to understand is the price of your assets. Because you're borrowing USDC against assets that might not be USDC, like one or Bitcoin or Ethereum as collateral, um, the comptroller needs to know how much like how do you compare these assets 
Um, so what it does is, is it, for all your assets you deposit, it converts it to a common base, which is uh, US dollars, um, using this Oracle contract. Um, so the Oracle contract is actually the most, I would say, the, the most fragile piece of the whole thing. Um, if, you've, uh, if you're in DeFi, you've probably heard of like the cream hack or the Aave X sushi hack. Um, so this happens if, you're, um, if your Oracle isn't designed well enough, um, you're actually very vulnerable to flash loan attacks where uh, someone can artificially manipulate the price um, and make your protocol insolvent. Um, so how we, uh, so our implementation, we actually uh, wanted to launch with Chainlink. So we tested it with Chainlink on Testnet, which is an off-chain Oracle um, that uses volume-weighted average price or VWAP uh, uh, to get the price. Um, but because when, um, due to timing, the Chainlink Oracle wasn't ready for mainnet, uh, so we pivoted to this uh, Uniswap V2 TWAP contract. Um, so the unique thing about this is that the Unlike the Chainlink contract, the price is actually determined entirely on chain. So in a way, it's kind of more decentralized than Chainlink. Um, but uh, the drawback is that it uses um, time-weighted average price instead of volume-weighted average price. So there is a delay uh, in the freshness of your price. And also, you're um, reliant on the liquidity of the DEX. Uh, so if the DEX has low liquidity, the prices can be very volatile. Um, so for many reasons, uh, eventually we also want to move over to the Chainlink oracles. Um, I think they may be available next week, but we'll move over as soon as possible. Um, but uh, the current TWAP oracles we use is also designed to prevent the flash loan attacks uh, because we use the time-weighted average price. Uh, if you do a flash loan attack, uh, the, it would only affect one block and not the actual TWAP price. Um, so this is actually a, a somewhat unique model in launching a money market, since most money markets and other chains use the Chainlink Oracle, uh, and we managed to launch with a different type of Oracle. This is actually um, very novel, especially for uh, that we can also reuse this uh, approach for other potentially other blockchains without Chainlink on them. So just a bit of history for the project. We announced the project on the Harmony launch page on October 1st. Uh, and got a Harmony grant. Um, and then we worked for a month. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, by the way, uh, I still need to find someone to actually give us the grant. <laughs> it's still pending. <laughs> right. uh, and then we, we managed to launch on the end of October. And since we launched, we've actually gotten very good traction. Um, so assets on the Horizon Bridge, like bridge over from Ethereum to Harmony, uh, we see 10% um, to like 30% of the assets bridged over from Ethereum is actually deposited uh, into the Tranquil m money market. Um, and then just as an aside, when, I've, when we first started this journey, um, I'm from the Web2 world. I actually had very little experience engaging with like crypto Twitter or any of the crypto community. So I, like... Um, but my, um, the other dev, the lead dev, uh, Zero X Yamcha, got me involved uh, into this. But I was actually very, very skeptical, um, just main, mainly about the community aspect. Um, at the back of my mind, like the crypto Twitter, the crypto social media is like a full of like these people called degens, uh, and I was just very scared of interacting with them. Uh, and <laughs> I, I didn't even know like if we would ever get adoption. Uh, but through our journey. Like, maybe it's a Harmony community. Um, I actually got the exact opposite impression. The Harmony community and the entire, our Discord server, everyone, they've been actually very supportive. And, and the adoption, we've got really quick adoption. Um, that actually blew past my expectations. Um, so if you're a Web2 dev thinking about Web3, um, the community is actually here to help you. Uh, it's not anything scary. <laughs> Yeah, I'm proud to say um, we've actually finished all of our Q4 roadmap that we promised um, before we launched. Um, and now we're actually working on future roadmap. Uh, so the current thing that we're working on is the a liquid staking derivative token um, that we call the Tranquil um, Staked One. Uh, we actually have a, a, um, an app in the testnet working um, to prove this concept. Um, we think that the liquid staking concept is actually very underexplored. Um, like Anchor does some very clever things with it, but um, we feel that it's an underexplored area in DeFi and that we can um, 
we can uh, do a lot more creative ideas with it, um, including different types of uh, economic incentives. So we really want to explore more of what we can do with uh, liquid staking tokens. And also, we want to progressively decentralize um, and also add Harmony-specific assets. Uh, so with that, yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, also, um, uh, you can find me after in the happy hour. I would gladly share my experience going from Web 2 to Web 3. I'm uh, very enthusiastic about that. <laughs>